attention. Now, one issue we really need to understand is the different types of data collection methods. Before you can embark on the journey of collecting data, it's really important to know what methods are there. So I'm going to run you through the methods and then you're going to judge for yourself which ones you can probably use in your own setting. But let's go to the survey. This one is the most commonly used one. And uh, I'm sure you've heard a couple of times that uh, you, if you want to do a survey, you need to sample from a population because for obvious reasons, you don't have the adequate resources to interview everybody. So when you have such a setting where you collect data from a specific group of people, which is a subset of the population, what you're doing is a survey. So I'm sure for those of you who've done this activity, you are aware that it's actually a, a series of interviews that you conduct using a questionnaire. You may not do it yourself. You may hire somebody to do it on your behalf. And they'll use different um, techniques. They'll use the closed-ended questions or open-ended questions. Closed-end questions is where you have multiple choice. So you ask somebody, do you believe uh, this project is giving you the best service? You give them a list of multiple choice questions. A, yes, B, no, C, maybe. That's a closed-ended questionnaire. But an open-ended questionnaire is where you just ask them without any multiple choice questions and they can give you any answer. You can ask them, do you believe this question, this project is giving you the best you deserve? And they will tell you, oh yes, it, it's, it's giving me the best, but I think I'm not enjoying the way the project staff treat me. Yeah. Key informant interviews is another way of collecting data. So key informant interviews are interviews conducted with individuals that have privileged information about what is happening. Now, I, I forgive me, you might notice that I'm not actually reading my slides and that's how I do it most of the time. Even when I'm coaching my students, I won't really read the slides, but I would expect you to listen and read both what I say and what's on the slide they're telling. So certain individuals have privileged information and that's why you're targeting them in these interviews because they're going to give you that information. So it could be government officials. Take for example, if you are implementing a project where you want to give loans to women, now, you discover that women are not being receptive to these laws, and you wonder why. So you go, to, you go to these key informants to tell you their view of why this is happening, because they may have privileged information about what's transpiring in the community. Another data collection method, I hope you guys are not getting bored. I know it can be boring sometimes when you're hearing the same person speaking and speaking and speaking. You can pause this video sometimes and then take a break, come back. Focus group discussions, another important way of collecting data. You get eight to 12 people in a room and ask them a series of questions. So this focus group discussion is another important way of getting people's views. But I must mention that uh, this is mainly a qualitative approach because you are going to be getting people's perceptions, which may not be entirely true, 
but there may be some truth to what they are saying. And that's why later on, you, you try and triangulate this information. So eight to 12 people is the standard. And I'm sure they, I'm sure there's a reason why, because the more people you have, the more difficult it is to coordinate a discussion. There's one thing I need to mention that when you're using this method, try to avoid letting one person dominate the discussion. Let everybody be part of it because that's why it's a focus group discussion, right? You want everybody to partake in whatever is taking place. Now, the other method is observation. So an observation is um, where you go in the field and you use the power of sight to really know what is taking place. You look at the surrounding, you look at the environment, you look at the beneficiaries, what is really taking place. That is observation. So when you go in the field, record what you've seen and come and generate a report. Now, I don't believe this should be done in isolation. It should be done as a supplement when you're doing other forms of data collection. So if you're using the questionnaire, it must be accompanied by observation. I don't believe this should be done solely on its own because of its also subject subjectivity attached to it, subjectiveness rather. I may see things as poorly done. Another person comes and sees it differently. So that's the problem with this one. So you need to use it in conjunction with other um, methods. Then finally, method five, last but not the least, is the checklist. This is a list of items or components that need to be in place or can inspect procedures and behavior. So a checklist is basically you can you go with a form that has certain standards and you check, you click. Okay, you tick rather. Go in the field. If you don't find what you're looking for, you tick no. If you find it there, you tick yes. So this is a checklist. And usually this is done in projects that um that have some kind of um, buildings taking place, all right, where you have to check the quality of, um, let's say, if it's a water and sanitation project, boreholes have been built, you go with your checklist and tick whether certain things have been uh, done the right way or have been installed the correct way. So those are some of the things but also it may not be that alone. When you're doing a data quality audit, you also go with a checklist 